Hello from Dendrite Digital in Anaheim. Makers of the Virtue Data Processor. So here is VGA. Yeah, Super VGA. We have XGA. And one more resolution, VESA. 640 by 480 VGA, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024. And all of this coming off of the same uh, Nexus uh, 4 FPGA from Digilent. Here we have uh, the modules for the multi-resolution uh, display unit. It's the core for doing uh, four different resolutions on a VGA port. So here we have BESA, which is uh, uh, 1280 by 1024. And here is XGA, which is 1024 by 768. Here's Super VGA, which is 800 by 600. And then uh, we have standard VGA, 640-480. And uh, we have them all accessible. Here's the uh, clock input, which is the system clock for the board. I'm using a Nexus 4. And then we have two switches to select which resolution we're doing. And we have the red, green, and blue outputs. And then we have the horizontal sync and the vertical sync. And this is the top level, so you need to make a XDA file. Or what is it? Mm, yeah, the configuration file for doing uh, the VGA port. And on the Nexus 4 board, we have 12 bits of color. So each of these have four uh, in their net. And so get to the nitty gritty. Here we are. And uh, you see, uh, we're selecting the resolution with REZ, the variable REZ, which is essentially the two switches, but it's only checked at one one frame, of one pixel of one one scan line. When uh, it's there, it changes the value from of res to whatever the switches are. And then uh, here's our MMCM made with Clock Wizard. And I'll show you how to do that in detail shortly. Then we have uh, VGA and Super VGA and XGA and VESA. And each of these are the is it's essentially the same module. Um, I'm just passing in different parameters and constants. So uh, and uh, yeah, you can see here we're selecting from the outputs of the module going out as the uh, top module. So uh, it gets selected here. Now, the reason I've done it this way with uh, the clock is um, because you end up with a gated clock if you, if you put in a variable here. Uh, and uh, I didn't like that, so I, I parsed them out. Unfortunately, the, the characters that I'm using 
are uh, hard-coded in a ROM and I have to duplicate the ROM for each one of these modules which is kind of sad. I don't know if Avada would optimize it out but uh, I don't think it does. I think it I think it keeps all four of them. So uh, here's those uh, parameters I'm using uh, to change the graphics mode. Here's the 17 uh, bits for the output. And here we're doing the horizontal and V count. The reason we're doing this as output is so we can select our resolution at the at the um, beginning of the mode. I've got all the uh, the uh, uh, vertical and horizontal blank shoved up in the upper left corner, and uh, so when this hits one on both the horizontal and vertical count it changes the the resolution of the switch and that way I don't get any um, I don't get slicing and stuff that would happen on the output and uh, here's here's that character set I talked about I've got a mod module lower down in this file to specify the uh, bits of the uh, characters that I'm displaying and so we pass in the clock, select the character, and the row of the character, and next is the output byte for that row. And here we're initializing our variables. Must initialize everything, otherwise it won't work right. And then we have our always block with the clock on positive edge and it's checking to see if the V count or the H count is in the blank and if it is blank make the color zero otherwise we set the color to either off on or on off based on flip and then uh, here's the horizontal sync pulse, the vertical sync pulse, this is uh, front porch, back porch, when it's between the front porch and back porch you uh, assert the, the sync signal, otherwise it's the inverse of the sync signal. Same for uh, vertical blank, uh, front porch, back porch, and then we have the horizontal. If it's less than the total width, then uh, you add one to the horizontal counter. Otherwise, you set it to zero. And uh, when you set the horizontal count to zero, you increment the, the vertical count. Otherwise, you set that to zero. And then here um, we have eight pixels per row on the characters. So we're selecting uh, the address for the or the character. It's uh, 128 characters, which is seven bits. You can see zero through six, seven bits of the address. And that's on uh, the sixth pixel word where selecting the character and that way uh, when it goes to the character unit here when it when the character goes to this unit here uh, you gotta wait a clock cycle before it pops up and next the data pops up and next so down here we're setting pixel equal to next and over here we're setting flip flag to uh, change the colors, uh, switch the colors from on to off, and vice versa. So here's the off color, here's the on color, and so flip would, would transpose those. 
you can see I've got a tilde here which uh, inverts the all the bits in the color and then uh, we have our character set this is pretty simple enough it's it's got the clock it's got the character it's got the row of the character and then this is the the pixel output for the bits it's got eight bits and so we define our character data it's eight bits wide and 128 characters and eight rows for each character and then uh, we need to initialize our uh, pixel ridge and we do that with the uh, always block always use always my instructor used to say and so we have the positive edge of the clock we set pixel or picks to uh, the character uh, character select and row select and here it's real simple it just just goes through here this is character zero and each of the eight rows and that's the uh, heart symbol there and so I go through and I define all 128 characters that way and uh, I'm gonna post this code on github should be there by the time you see this video you can see that uh, it's just eight bits per row it goes through all the characters so if we go down to the bottom there's uh, 127 so that's that's pretty much it for the code now uh, let me uh, show you how to uh, create a clock wizard uh, unit let me uh, delete this it's gonna be kind of kind of difficult but if we delete this we're gonna totally remake it so you can see how it works So uh, to start with, we go uh, window, IP catalog, and we're going to search for clocking. There's our clocking wizard. And uh, first of all, let's give it uh, our module name. Get our module name. And then outputs. I want to turn off uh, reset and uh, and locked so uh, and then it's best to start with the highest uh, clock rate go in and change it Now it starts out okay, it gets exactly right, but then uh, if you want more clocks, uh, it's going to start giving us numbers that aren't what we want. It's 
starts to give uh, us numbers. And I'll show you how to edit that. Why is my keyboard not working? Oh, I need to click the button. Yeah. See, so uh, let me start. And I advise that you uh, make all your clocks before uh, you change their values to match the actual. Otherwise, it it it'll uh, hang up. It won't uh, give you the results you want. It'll likely not pass timing. See, these values change every time you add a new clock and uh, you need to match that exactly otherwise you get this warning down here and uh, bad to have warnings and now uh, VGA is a little little different it's not uh, exactly on the uh, it's not exactly on the uh, even megahertz. It's got a few digits behind it. So again, let's click the port. Nope, didn't get it right. I clicked it twice. I click it once and then wait. You gotta be real patient with the uh, the clocking wizard, it's it's tremendously slow. Especially on my little Atom processor. Now, this is 175 here. So we got VESA. XGA, Super VGA, and VGA. Now we have to match these exactly. So uh, if we come here, we go do eight six six. What? Still didn't like it. Changed it again. So let's try thirteen nine four five. So you gotta have these exactly right, otherwise you'll get you'll get bad things happening. Looks like five three. All right, and then this one, we go four, five, eight. Hopefully it won't change again. And forty eight six two one. Then five 
Sean and Lee. 25. Point two seven one seven four. All right, so let's see if we get that red to go away. Yep. So those are roughly what we want, and they're not exact, but it's as close as you can get with one uh, clock tile. And uh, I wanted to demonstrate how this works. Now what we got to do is name name the port so we recognize uh, what the megahertz are in the module. This one. Yeah, you got to go slow because because uh, the clock wizard isn't particularly quick. So now we'll be able to see these in the uh, clock wizard wizards generated code and we'll see the megahertz uh, expressed as the port name and if we hit the tab and there we have it so uh, we're gonna you know uh, there's there's other parts to this and uh, I haven't fully explored them but my guess is the clock wizard will take care of most of this and you won't have to mess with it so these are all uh, in here and uh, again I turned off reset and clocked and let's go OK And that looks all right. Hit generate. Okay, wait for update to finish. Okay, now we're going to go inside the clock wizard to see if it turned out right. And uh, we're going to be warned that it's just going to take longer at compile time. So uh, here we're going to look at the clock wizard uh, code. See, generated by clock wizard, copyright, don't mess with it or you'll, you can have problems. But uh, yeah, see, so we have... We have our uh, megahertz here. 
and see the order of them so we don't have to use uh, we're, we're gonna use relative addressing I know it's wrong but I'm doing it anyway and I'm just gonna make sure it's in the proper order so we have 108 65 40 25 and then the clock input so this is going to be the 100 megahertz clock input that we have and uh, let's go look at it so if we look at uh, the code for my module make sure it's in the right order see 108 65 40 25 clock input and then uh, we have the proper megahertz for the resolution VGA is 25 super VGA is 40 uh, XGA is 65 and VESA is 108 so it looks like we're done now all we have to do is uh, compile it and run it and we'll see shortly what what it's done so uh you can uh you can uh look at the log uh, as is generating this so uh, first it's got to generate the clock it's gonna take it a while so uh, let's look yeah see it's it's gonna generate the clock and uh, after it's done that, you can you can see it uh, synthesize it. You're going to get a lot of warnings with this module, these modules, but uh, most of them you can kind of ignore. The results still work, but uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on that I'm not sure I know how to fix. <laughs> And uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you.